was born in Charlestown. I've lived here all my life. I joined the fire company in January, January 6th of 1966. And I just figured where to go from there. And that first year where I first started learning how to be in the, about the fire service, and the best teacher I had was Mr. Frank Weller. He's no longer with us. I really got interested in the forest service when I was a little boy when I first lived at Millville. When it, and a uh, whip store caught on fire when I was a little boy then, and the fire truck was sitting in front of my house at a fire hydrant, and that kind of got my interest in it. I've been interested ever since. I guess the most tragic and fire I was on, there was a fire in Ranch, and it was a trailer fire. It was in 67, I believe. We got there on between the 3rd and 4th Avenue on the uh, west side of town, and there was a child trapped in the fire. And I'm not going to say who the men were, but one of our members was in there looking for, and he found the child on the bed, and he brought it out, and I was standing at the door, and he handed it to me, and I was, the child's face was black as that camera I'm looking at, but it was in the early spring, and it was cool that day, and I know God must have had something to do with it, because as soon as he dropped him on, that child started crying. I handed it to the ambulance crew. They took it to the old Charlestown Hospital, and lo and behold, this guy's probably about 40 years old today, and last I heard, he'd been a policeman in D.C. and all that, but it was really something to see that child just jump to life there in my hands. And I hate to tell you, I, and I started crying. Well, I guess the most spectacular fire I was on was when the Wright Dunny Elementary School burned. I mean, we were there a good 24 hours. Lightning. Funny story about it, I was working at uh, then Charlestown Racecourse before it had the slots. Mm -hmm. And it was a thunderstorm. It was in May, late May, just before school let out. And I came home, mom was still living. She had supper, laddie, and I'd ate supper, went out on the front porch. I heard this bang of lightning, I heard this loud clap of thunder, because I said, man, that was close. But the next one was close than that. They run me in the house. Mom said, told me, he said, y'all going out? I said, nah, we're not going out. And about that time, they banged us out. And I was coming up Liberty Street, headed for the far hall. That's when we had at the old station down on the corner, west of Washington. I looked up Lawrence Street. I said, uh-oh. And that was one of the, I had went to that school at one time, one year, before they built Ranson Elementary. And it was very emotional to a lot of guys that had went all their went to school there. And, yeah, but, it was a landmark, it was lost to the county. Another fire I was on was, if anybody remembers it, was what we used to call the toy factory, or the place to build puzzles. Uh, the phone company offices are there now in front of the concrete slab. That was another 24 hour fire. I think that's the first time I've ever seen a fire tornado. It was so hot. It was drawing in like cool air from the bottom and going up and it worked just like a tornado. It was all that material in there, papers and stuff burning. And we had to stay there all night to make sure we didn't get out of hand, you know, because across the road was a trailer court, houses, you know, across the road, make sure Y Songs Farm was right across the road. Most of them, as we used to call smells and bells. Now, the night them six people burned, no, I was not there out right there on, uh, at the Washington Farm, Locust Hill. I uh, wasn't at that one, but I was down to Fire Hall the next day, but I wasn't in town that night. I heard about it when I came home the next day. Mr. Weller, well, when I joined the company, he was fire school instructor. Well, at that time, there was no state fire school pamphlet, as to say they have now, put out by the for a uh, state fire association. Well, he had what he always called the pre-basic course. He taught the basic needs of the, what you do at a fire. 
you know, how you, how you start with your hose, how you do that, how you wear the mask. Well, when they went to the, the new, what the dam was called, Section 1, Section 2, we got looking at Section 1. And it was Mr. Weller's pre-basic course, almost word for word, because he was so respected at, in the Forest Service in his state. Uh, Chief-wise, I guess the best chief I ever served under was Mr. Kenny Willingham. I've known him before I joined the company because his wife went to our church and I went to school with his daughter, so I knew Kenny. He was, he was what we used to say, like I am, hard-headed. But uh, you could, he would reason with you. Uh, we had this old antique fire truck. And ended up, I would, Kenny was the officer in charge of it and I was the driver. Matter of fact, they still got it up there at a 29 Chevrolet. <clears throat> That's, well, i tell you a little incident of that fire truck. This is weird. We were selling chances and something or another. I was down at the old, at that time, it's now CVS, but it was People's Drug Store out at the Hilldale Shopping Center. And this lady came out and said, I'll buy some chances off you, but I hate that truck. I said, what do you mean, ma'am? said, my father was killed on that truck. This gentleman was glad this happened, because this gentleman belonged to the Independent Park Company. And he caught our truck. And they were going into Cable Town, and there's a sharp curve. This should come into Cable Town. It's like a nine degree turn. And he was actually riding straddle with a handbar on the side of the truck. Well, the driver lost control, and the truck went through the fence, and he got wrapped up in the fence and the barbed wire, and what they tell me, and he was killed. And eventually, they got rid of the fire truck. And Hall Town sold it back to us for one dollar. And when it came back, it looked like a bomb hit it. They had sat down in a shed down there, long in the boots of tank, it sprung a leak, frame had rotted in two. Well, if you seen that truck, you thought it was ready for the junkyard. Well, when it got back to us, it was red. Well, we started fixing that truck up. It got down to the original for coat of paint, it was green. And if you see this truck today, you wouldn't think what it looked like in that picture. And I think, Jim, I think if you saw them pictures over down that photo album, you know what I'm talking about. It was pretty rough looking, wasn't it? Well, everywhere we go, that little truck would win trophies. We've even beat older apparatus. And it was like, I have older motorized. I beat a 1912 Brockway one time with the Winchester Apple Blossom. Some of the engine apparatus we had, when I joined the fire department in 66, we had a 37 C grave aerial truck, a 52 International, a 63 Mac, and a 64 International Travel. Well, eventually we got rid of the international, let's see, the first wrap apparatus I think left was we sold uh, the aero truck first. We got bought a 60 Ward of France 85 foot aerial. Uh, the next thing to go would be the international. So we bought a 64. It actually was, it said Pierce, but it, had, it was on an FLWD body. It was four wheel drive. It was the biggest thing I have seen. The Mac went, we got a, six, a 91. That went next. As a matter of fact, the Mac and the FWD kind of left the year apart. The FWD went first. No, the Mac went first. We got an F, uh, 91 Pierce, what they have today. Then the uh, FWD left and we got the other far truck today. The little international travel all has been replaced by the second vehicle was a 72, I believe it was a Chevy box rescue squad. We sold it to a far company in New York. Then we got the big 89, I think it says Volvo on it up there at the far, I, I could be wrong. I think that's what it says on there, because I think it's part of the GM series. 
And then we had a little, uh, I'm trying to think, I think it was a 76 Suburban, and it was four wheel drive. We eventually sold it. And as of right now, up there at the Far Hall, I can remember they got the 91 Aerial and the two Pierces. One's a 91, the other's a 92. The 89 Rescue, they have that 29 Chevrolet. The first piece of equipment we had is a two rear hose cart we still own. They have a, a brush truck, I don't know what the year of it is. And they have a, a Chevrolet they use for a duty car. It used to be a Loudoun County Sheriff's Department car. And as for say, that's what they have up there right now. They are hurting for volunteers. They need a man. I know I have. I still listen to my scam. I'm not active anymore, but they need their hard getting out because they don't have, especially in the daytime, they need more volunteers to help get them apparatuses 